Hi everybody, Steve from Steve's Makerspace. Today I am going to be discussing four of my art projects, Radiant, Tile Study, Inflow, and Espresso Dreams. This is part one of two videos. In the second part, I'm going to talk about Floral Fusion and Traveling Circus. I'm not going to go into detail with all of the code from these four projects because I've already covered the concepts in previous videos, but I will be going over some of the code for new things that I'm doing in these projects and basically giving you the learning experiences from each of these projects. We'll start by talking about Radiant. Here are some of the iterations from that. One of the first things I do is draw a background. You can see this is a very nice watercolor sort of background. I've talked about doing a watercolor texture in the past, but this one is a little bit different. I've exaggerated the code here to show you what it's drawing. Uh, so these are basically wonky circles. So if I fill in those gaps, you'll see this. And then if I get rid of the high alpha, then you'll see something like this. So that's very nice. For those wonky circles, I've got a begin shape, end shape with a vertex. It's going around a circle, except that the radius of that circle is varying and it's skipping a bunch as it goes around that circle. So I think it only hits maybe five points. With that watercolor texture I talked about in the past, I'd done a wonky star, maybe 20,000 in random positions. This time I'm going through the grid, through the X's and the Y's, and I'm using a noise function to pick one of two different colors. So I've got, uh, you can see this green color and this red color. And so depending on the noise from the XY position, it's gonna return the red or the green uh, from the color palette. Because these are background colors, these colors have low saturation. That's important for the background. The rest of this here uses five colors and one of those colors at the end is an accent color, and so that's appearing here. So the accent color is used sparingly, and I've got it in the center. All of these bands are going through thirds positions, and the radials are all in a thirds position. A thirds position means one third of the way into the canvas horizontally and vertically, so there are four thirds positions on the canvas. For these radials, there are two canvases being drawn, two different radials on two different canvases in the same position. The two canvases get layered on top of each other, but for the top canvas, before it gets placed, part of it gets erased. And there's two methods for erasing that top canvas. We have this pie shape erase, which is using arcs to erase, and the other one are thick circles. So concentric thick circles being erased. Also for these radials, there are multiple types of radials on each canvas. So I've got one radial here in this yellow is just lines going out. And then on top of that, I've got another radial of these things. So you could have just one type of radial on a canvas, but it's rare. Usually there are multiple types layered on top of each other. Another thing I might mention about this project is the organization of my files. This code was getting pretty lengthy, so I've got this broken out into different files, different JS files. I've got a color and background section. I've got my main JS file. I've got another file for radials. So these are all my different types of radials in one file. So this is helping me go back and forth in my code and stay organized. That's all I wanted to talk about with Radiant. Now with Tile Study. This is a whole bunch of different types of tilings. I've done tilings in the past. So I start off by drawing a pretty simple picture. If I take out the tiling, you'll see something like this, or this, or this. So these are just circles and lines, and then some texture added to those circles and lines. The texture that I'm adding is the same paper texture that I've talked about before, but instead of using small lines, I've just upped the stroke weight a whole bunch. So it's drawing a whole bunch of thick curves, and that creates a blurring effect. So after I've got my picture, then I'm grabbing sections of that picture. 
uh, using the get function to grab squares for that. Now, one of these is not a square, it's a circle. For that, I'm using a clip function. So for that circle, I create a buffer canvas using create graphics. I draw the circle. I call the clip function right here. Then I take the image that I drew on the canvas to begin with, and I place that after I do the clip function, and that puts that image inside the circle. I'm also grabbing my highlight color from my color palette because I want this circle to be the highlight color, and I'm tinting it. I call the tint function using that highlight color, and then I call the image function again. So I take my original drawing and I place it once again, but this time it's been tinted. But also notice this appears to have a shadow here. So before I place this circle onto my main canvas, I draw a gray circle a little bit offset from where this is going to be. It has an alpha of 80, and then after I draw this shadow circle, then I finally place this circle onto the canvas. Now I want to talk about Inflow and also Espresso Dreams. And the reason I want to talk about both of them is they actually use the same code. Both of them are making flow fields from noise. This flow field has a low resolution to the noise, so it has a nice smooth look to it. Whereas this flow field has a higher resolution, so it has a lot more twists and turns to it. Also with this flow field, I start off with a thick width to the line segment, which I'm exaggerating here. But as the line segment moves, it gets thinner until it gets to a point. Whereas with this one, the line segments don't start off thick. They start off thin and stay thin. For inflow, here I'm overriding the random seed. And if I take out the final drawing, you'll see that there's a buffer canvas that gets drawn first with basic shapes and basic colors. And later the code is going to grab the color from this canvas in order to color the stroke on the main canvas. There is also another buffer canvas being drawn. And this is a grayscale canvas. And this second buffer canvas is also going to be sampled for whatever the color gray is on this canvas. And that is going to determine the angle for the flow field. So if we look here, this is a dark gray and this is almost white. And if you look at the final drawing, these lines are going this way. So that is the white color angle. And these lines are going this way, which is the dark gray color angle and the direction of flow where there's no rectangles is based on Perlin noise. And the flow angle for these circles is circular, and I talked about that in the video with Jeff Palmer. For Espresso Dreams, I'm doing the same thing. I'm overriding the seed, and this also uses two buffer canvases, one for angles, one for color. Instead of rectangles with this one, I drew long, skinny triangles. So if I take out the final drawing, here's the grayscale canvas, and then here is the color canvas. This is also notable for being my first params project, and I've got a video talking about how to set up the params. So that's going to do it for this video. Stay tuned for part two, where we'll cover floral fusion and traveling circus. If you've liked this video, please give it a like. Consider subscribing to the channel. Ring the bell for notifications comments. I love to read your comments, especially if you have any questions about these projects. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye now. Steve's Makerspace.